Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Well, Halloween is tomorrow and I kind of felt like doing something a little bit more of the season still. And so I was clicking around one of my favorite YouTube channels, Ambari, when I saw this. And I thought, okay, well, you know, sometimes these videos can be deceptive. This may look like an enormous deep sea spider, but it actually could be pretty small, like our little Los Angeles millipede. So I did some Googling and this spider's leg span is the size of this pillow. 20 inches. So if this spider is creeping by you, this is the space it is taking up. That is ridiculous. It is fully a giant deep sea spider. Totally real, absolutely enormous, and an incredible nightmare that I just have to share with you all today. And for you arachnophobes out there, just keep in mind that this spider lives in the deep, deep ocean. So don't worry, it's not gonna be something that you're gonna find under your pillow because it's the same size as your pillow. So be brave, jump into the Halloween spirit with me, and let's take a brief peek into the world of giant deep sea spiders. I cannot believe that's a thing. So as you can see from Mbari's video, this is a giant deep sea spider, properly known as a pycnogonid. They do come in a range of sizes and appearances, but the ones living in the deep sea, mostly in the Antarctic region, are ginormous. According to the Department of Environment and Energy in Australia, they can grow into a leg span of two and a half feet. I'm not even that afraid of spiders and I'm like, are you kidding me, nature? But these spiders are actually part of a phenomenon known as polar gigantism. This is a phenomenon where species that live in polar waters tend to be much larger than their relatives that live in temperate or tropical waters. And there are many theories as to why this is, but I would say that two and a half foot wide spiders probably qualify as part of this phenomenon. But their enormous size is actually practical. Their long legs are in contrast to a relatively small body size. And the length of their legs can be used for not only moving along the ocean floor, but also for a kind of swimming. They can be found in depths from 7,200 feet to over 13,000 feet. Now that's not as deep as our giant phantom jellyfish from a couple of videos ago, but it's still pretty deep. Ambari has spotted at least two species of this group deep in the Monterey Canyon, and that's where they captured this video. Pycnogonids are actually arthropods. Another name used for them, pantopoda, actually means all legs, and that is pretty spot on. Pycnogonids have extremely reduced bodies where the abdomen has almost all but disappeared and the legs have this long clawed look. The head has a long proboscis with a triangular opening that serves as a mouth and several simple eyes on a central tubercle. The head also bears a pair of claws and a pair of special organs called ovigers on which the eggs are carried. And the legs of these spiders have another purpose as they are part of the digestive system. Adult pycnogonids suck the juice from soft-bodied invertebrates like sea anemones. The path of digestion then goes through their crazy long legs. And Bari researchers actually observed a giant sea spider crouching over and clinging to the fleshy tentacle of a pom-pom anemone. Another sea spider was even observed clipping a couple of the tentacles and taking its dinner to go. Yeah they do take away. Sexes on the sea spiders are separate and the fertilization is apparently external. The males carry the eggs on the ovigers until they hatch. And there are many kinds of species of this deep sea spider. In 2015, an ROV in the Indian Ocean captured this species, which actually has three extra little mini legs that this species uses for cleaning, courtship, and carrying their young. There are over 1,300 species of deep sea spiders, but no way to know how many there actually are total in the oceans. I'm gonna go out on a limb though and say lots. I bet there's lots of them. Is it clear? No. How many? Lots. I also saw someone online refer to them as an emaciated face hugger, which I thought was actually pretty accurate. Though I think they're still bigger than a face hugger. I think. 
Oh, okay. So the Google tells me that the open width of a face hugger is two feet four inches. So, yeah, they are about the same size. Wow, real life deep sea face huggers. But only if you're a sea anemone or something similar. Then it really is like aliens down there. And on that cheerful note, <laughs> I mean, you can't blame me. It is Halloween. And you saw the video? How could I not? No one can be mad at me. But please let me know your thoughts in the comments below, even if you are mad at me. Happy Halloween, everyone. Thanks for watching. And as always, I will see you in the next video.